Well, welcome back to our soap videos. We are working through the Gospel of Luke, and this is week five. Five. <laughs> yep. I had to double week. check. We are picking up in the middle of chapter six and working our way through the middle of chapter seven. So what does that cover? Yeah. Well, kind of what we noticed last week was we, we took a step back and we wanted to look at Luke from a, from a bigger picture. And we said we need to focus on people. And we need to focus on what, what is the message and the miracles that are being done. And then also, what are the Pharisees up to? You know, so, so kind of from, from that order. And we see everybody in the picture this week in, in various, uh, various stages. But this week is very heavy on the message. Yeah. So it's going to be kind of interesting. Um, you know, Jesus is now getting out his message. And this isn't a message that he just does once and he's done. Right. It's going to be done in, in multiple places. Yeah. So, in fact, some of it's going to sound familiar right. from another passage. And people are going to look at the heading and say, hold on a second. That's not what I thought this was from. So we'll get to that. In yeah, so, yeah, exactly. So what is that message? Well, Jesus is saying things like, blessed are you when people hate you because of me. Mm-hmm. I mean, that's the that's a little that's a little tough. Love your enemies. The golden rule: treat others the way you want to be treated. All that's in here. Don't judge. Produce good fruit. Uh, build your house on a solid foundation. I mean, some of these truths that if you've read the Bible, studied the Bible, you know. Right. So it's easy to gloss over them, mm -hmm. but I recommend you don't. Yeah. Uh, and Jesus also throws in something in there. He says, "Why do you call me Lord, Lord?" And don't do what I tell you. Mm -hmm. it's like, oh. <laughs> he knows us. So we're talking happens. about the Sermon on the Mount, right? Right. Well, maybe it's Sermon on the. It's a message on the plane. It says right? it's the Sermon on the Plane, right? Right. Okay. So I didn't even know Jesus took planes. You know, <laughs> <laughs> different no, kind. So, different. Okay. Yeah. Right. So, so what's the deal? So, so the ser is it the Sermon on the Mount or is it the Sermon on the Plane? Is this one of those discrepancies in the Bible? Right. I think it goes back to what you said. Is that this message was not something he delivered once. This wasn't like a sermon. In fact, I don't even like the term sermon. But, okay, you know, it's not like he went up on the mountain or went out on the plane, delivered it once, and then he was done. He was an itinerant preacher. He traveled around with the same message, right? And so, I mean, he tweaked it for each given audience. In fact, you'll see in Luke that there is more emphasis on... Um, poor and hungry than there is in Matthew's version, the Sermon on the Mount. Uh, so there are there are a few differences because he changed it for his audience, but the truths are all still there. Right. So is there a Sermon on the Mount? Yes. Is there a Sermon on the Plain? Yes. They're two different, and yet they're essentially uh, the same thing. Uh, you'll Like you said, you'll notice a lot of the same stuff in here. One of the things in Luke 6 that I wanted to point out is verse 38. You've heard this before, and it's it's used a lot in uh, word of faith type stuff, prosperity gospel. Give and it will be given to you, a good measure, pressed down, shaken together, running over, will be poured into your lap, for the measure you use will be the measure you receive. So that means if we just give enough, right, we get, a, we get more back. We get more back, right? No problem. Right. Well, that is absolutely true in its context. What does verse 37 say? Do not judge, and you will not be judged. Do not condemn, and you will not be condemned. Forgive, and you will be forgiven. Give, and it will be given to you. This is in the context of how we treat individual people. Judging, condemning, forgiving. Right, versus money. Versus just the whole, oh, I'm going to you know, plant a seed in this ministry, and God owes me you know, all this stuff. So when you come across this, um, it's it's very important that we you know see this in context. So, so what uh, after after the message, the sermon on the plain, then you said that right. So miracles. there are some miracles, like like we talked about. Uh, we find two miracles this week. One is the uh, centurion slave, uh, which is the healing, and then also bringing the widow's son mm -hmm. back, back to life. Mm -hmm. uh, and it's kind of neat because. Um, Luke is focusing on the people aspect of it, yeah. which is kind of a cool thing. Yeah, the raising the widow's son. Luke is the only, only one who even mentions right. it. Even Matthew and Mark don't don't bring it up. And I, I love the fact where it says um, he after he raised the 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 son 
says, Young man, I say to you, get up. So the dead man sat up and began to speak, and Jesus gave him back to his mother. Right. So his mother was going to be destitute. Yeah. Right? I mean, she was she was in a going to be dire straits. Yeah. And her uh, financial life was given back to her. Yep. It was from that standpoint. She was already a widow, and right. now she lost her son. Right. Now, here's another cool thing. Jesus crashed funerals. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. When the dead person isn't dead anymore, it's not a funeral. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We were talking about it, right? Because the they go by and he touches them, so he becomes unclean. Except he doesn't. Right. Because they're not dead anymore. Right. Is that so, really what you call awake? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> wow. <laughs> uh, one thing on the centurion. Um, uh, if you've read the story of the centurion before, you might say, hold on a second, that's not exactly how I remember it. And that's good, because you need to go to Matthew and Mark, and each one of them gives a little bit of a different detail. In um, And when we read all three of them, it brings the whole thing together, picture. and you see the right. bigger picture, which honestly gives me a whole lot more respect for the centurion than any one of the three alone does. So um, it's worth looking up. I'm not going to give you the reference. Make, do, do your own work. Uh, Matthew and Mark and uh, find the same story about the centurion uh, asking Jesus to heal his servant and see the little differences and bring it all together. It's actually very cool. So then at the end of the week, uh, we're going to be reading more about John the Baptist. And there's an interaction with John the Baptist and, and Jesus. And then Jesus talks to the crowd about John, too. Yeah, uh, John, John is um, in prison by this point. Right, I think right. we've already talked about that. Right. And he's sending a couple of his disciples. His disciples to Jesus, and he's questioning, are you the one who is to come, or should we look for another? Right, are you the Messiah? Yeah, and I think that's a good reminder that we cannot let our circumstances drive um, the truth. John was not supposed to be in prison. He was the forerunner of the Messiah who was going to bring in the kingdom, and now he's, he's in prison, and Jesus didn't say, oh yeah, of course, listen, listen to me, just just trust me. He, put, he sent John back to the scriptures. He said, what have you seen? What do you know is true? I've done this, I've done this, I've done this, I've done this. Doesn't this sound like what the prophets said? So he sent him back to the scriptures. And I think that's really important for us too. When, when we're in situations where we say, Could, it, is what I believe true? Jesus doesn't just say, well, yeah, just trust me. He says, go back to Scripture. And I think that's an important part. Uh, important yeah, point. Good point. Good point. All right, so everybody's going to be reading this week. Um, we have, I'm sure we have a couple things that we need to look out for, too. What do you have? Um, for, for me, honestly, I think it, it, it's the, the big thing is in Jesus and John the Baptist. I think that is the big thing for me yeah. is... Um, um, uh, the the you were talking about the Pharisees and Sadducees and everybody um, and Jesus calls them out and says um, when John came you know he wasn't doing all of the stuff and you're like what a loser he's not eating and drinking and all this stuff and Jesus comes by and he eats with sinners and drinks and 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 has parties with people and gets on their level they're like what a loser he's a glutton he's a drunk it's like okay you're you're never going to be able to satisfy legalistic you know, rules-based people. So um, go back to the scriptures. What does God say? And connect yourself to Jesus. And that's that's all he's really asking for here. He's like, look at me and what I'm doing. Don't let the other stuff um, get you off track. I think that's probably the biggest thing for me. Yeah, for me, uh, something similar, and we, we already brought it up today, is Luke the physician is concerned about the humanity. So in the... Um, Sermon on the Plain and the Message on the Plains, it's about individual people. You should do this. Treat others the way you want to be treated, not as a nation. Treat others the way you want to be, you know, on, on the individual level, yeah. which is kind of cool. And we already talked about the centurion son and the, uh, the widow's, the widow's, or the centurion slave and the widow's son, too, yeah. that it's on a humanistic level. And, and I thought it was interesting. It seemed to be um, not an individual thing, but it kind of through the whole couple chapters, the humanity just kind of oozes out of it. Yeah, yeah, it's really easy to see where where Luke's emphasis is going to be, 
as he pushes through here, and we'll see in the rest of the gospel too. But just the the, the miracles he chooses, the messages that he chooses to include, are really yeah, poignant. Right. right. Yeah. So does that bring us to? I think that's the end for today. That's the end for today. Yeah. Well, good. I hope you're finding these beneficial. If you're watching these, uh, make sure that you uh, let somebody know, share it with somebody, uh, let tell them how to subscribe or like our Facebook page. Uh, give them the link, oaktreechurch.com slash soap, so that they can follow along with the reading plan as well. Put your comments, put your questions uh, you know, down below in the, in the comments section. Uh, if you have feedback, you say, I'm not sure if I saw that in there. I'm not sure if I agree with that. That's awesome. Let's have a discussion. And uh, we'll come back next week. Sounds good. See, See everybody back. next week.